Hey guys, how are you going? Campbell here and just a bit of a different video. Uh, we've been doing a lot of talk about parasites on the Tartaria Australia show and I actually asked ChatGTP, how would a parasite take over the world? And I've mentioned it on a couple of podcasts, I think, but we keep forgetting to read it out. So I'm going to read it out for you now. How would a parasite take over the world, according to ChatGTP. Okay, so the question I gave ChatGTP was, what steps would a parasite take to take over the world by using humans as hosts and controlling them? And ChatGTP said... If a parasite were to take over the world using humans as hosts and controlling them, the following steps might outline its strategy. Number one, infiltration and the initial spread. Stealthy entry. The parasite would need to enter the human population undetected. This could be a common vector like contaminated food, water or an insect bite. The asymptomatic phase. Initially, the parasite might not cause noticeable symptoms, allowing it to spread quietly and unnoticed among humans. Number two, establishing control over the hosts. Neurobiological manipulation. The parasite would need to gain access to the host's nervous system, particularly the brain, and once there, it could release chemicals and proteins that alter brain function. Behavioral changes. The parasite could influence the host's behavior to favor its own spread. For example, it might induce increased social interaction or risk-taking behaviors that increase the likelihood of the host coming into contact with other humans. Number three, facilitating transmission. Social amplification. The parasite could enhance the host's sociability, making them more likely to engage in activities where they come into close contact with others, such as gatherings or public events. Altering communication. It could modify the host's speech patterns, making them more persuasive or charismatic, leading others to trust and follow them, further aiding in the parasite's spread. Spreading through bodily fluids. The parasite could ensure its transmission through bodily fluids such as saliva, sweat or blood, making casual or intimate contact a vector for infection. Number four, the global spread. Exploiting modern transportation. The parasite could take advantage of global travel networks with infected individuals unknowingly spreading it across countries and continents. Targeting high density areas. It would likely focus on urban centres where close human contact is frequent and the chances of spreading are highest. Number five, overcoming the host's defences. Immune system evasion. The parasite might evolve mechanisms to avoid detection by the host's immune system, such as mimicking host cells or suppressing immune responses antibiotic or antiviral resistance. If the parasite is a microorganism, it could develop resistance to medical treatments, making it harder to eradicate. Number six, establishing a network of controlled hosts. Hive mind formation. The parasite might create a network of controlled humans that work together in a coordinated manner, like a hive mind. This network could carry out complex tasks such as distributing communication or spreading misinformation to prevent a coordinated human resistance. Infiltration of key positions. Controlled hosts could be strategically placed in a key position of power, such as government, military, media and healthcare, allowing the parasite to influence or control societal functions and the decision-making process. Number seven, ensuring long-term dominance. Population manipulation. The parasite could influence reproductive behaviors, either encouraging the birth 
of more susceptible hosts or inhibiting reproduction in non-infected individuals. Psychological control. Over time, the parasite could erode individual autonomy, making hosts more submissive or compliant to its influence and reducing resistance efforts. Co-opting human technology. The parasite might leverage human technology to enhance its control, perhaps by hacking into the communication networks, surveillance systems, or even developing bioengineering methods to reinforce its hold over humanity. Number eight, countering human resistance. Sabotaging research and defense. Controlled hosts could sabotage scientific research efforts aimed at fighting a cure or undermining defense strategies. Misinformation campaigns. The parasite could use its controlled humans to spread misinformation, creating confusion, mistrust, and division among the uninfected population. And number nine, final domination. Global synchronization. Once a critical mass of the population is controlled, the parasite could synchronize its influence to enact a global plan, such as coordinated takeovers of essential infrastructure, mass communication, or resource control. Creating a new world order. With humanity under its control, the parasite could establish a new global system that serves its needs effectively making humans subservient hosts in a world governed by the parasite. And to conclude, it says, in this scenario, the parasite's ability to subtly manipulate and control humans would be the key to its success, leveraging human strengths such as social bonds and technology to its own advantage while undermining any efforts to resist. So there you have it, guys. That is what AI says about a parasite taking over the world. And, you know, the, a lot of this stuff we're, we have seen or we are seeing, right? Uh, the infiltration and spread, establishing control over hosts. You know, we've seen our food and our water, our air, everything about our natural world has been changed, right? To change the body gut biome to make us basically less healthy, less able to resist, to fight off parasites uh, we've got the social amplification of course you know they promote sex all these things sports people get together in stadiums and that in close so they promote these environments that would make it easier for a parasite to spread then we have overcoming host defenses look at our medical system you know not not only are they overcoming it but they're injecting this stuff into us the hive mind formation have we not all seen this in both, you know, the allies, the government and the stars and all this, they all think the same. They all come out and say the same thing, especially in the last four years, right? As well as, you know, the crazy blue head people, they all seem to have a hive mind as well. It's, it's a very strange thing that's going on. Uh, then, of course, establishing a network of controlled hosts. I mean, hello, that's what we already have, right? The news, you've got to trust the science, Right, got to worship the stars and believe what they say. Uh, and then ensuring long-term dominance. It's, it says that it would start to control the behaviours. So basically, people that were susceptible to becoming, you know, a host, their genes would be promoted. So they would be put more into to situations where they're going to breed. And people who aren't good hosts would could be affected in other ways so that literally they couldn't get pregnant right uh, and then of course countering human resistance you know all the war you know all the the fact that we don't have you know we're being censored we don't have access to information anymore like it's definitely a propaganda program going on and in number nine it literally says creating a new world order so pretty interesting stuff guys what do you think um leave me a comment below so i hope you like that one and yeah let me know what you think and of course if you're not subscribed already please subscribe if you like this content and make sure you give me a like comment you know share this video around if you find it interesting and all that cool stuff and i'll talk to you all on the next upload bye for now Remember in the end, nobody wins unless everybody wins Come! <laughs>
Asia. <laughs> 